Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Connor, and today we're going to be doing another book haul. Hey, bud. What's up? We're still in social distancing mode, but I did acquire some books, so I figured I'd show you guys what's going on. I don't have access to my normal library because it's at my parents' house, and I haven't seen them except for from, like, 10 feet away on Mother's Day. But, yeah, I'm going to show you all the books that I got. We're going to start off with some books that I got sent from a self-published author, then books sent from publishers, and then some books that I bought myself. If I have any other books come in, I will throw them in at the end, but let's get started. <laughs> so in here are the first five books of a series where I've actually already read the first three. I will leave links down in the description to my reviews of the first three books, but we'll cover it as we go along. So the first book in the series is Valley of Embers by Stephen Kelleher. This is the Land Kiss Saga. This series follows a bunch of different characters, but in this world, there are people that are chosen from the earth from nature and stuff and are given different abilities. One of the main ones that we follow is a character named Cole. He's an ember and he's able to wield flames on his sword. So you can see right there he has a flame on his sword. There are different beings in this world of varying powers and one of the ones that the land kissed and these people have to fight a lot are these beings called the sages which are trying to take over and ruin things or are trying to save the land kissed. Cole's people have been living in this valley, Valley of Embers, for a couple of generations now, and so they have become very isolated. They're having less and less embers be born and all of that stuff. It comes to a head and they have to confront the problem instead of hiding in their valley. The Eastern Dark is the main evil sage of this world and the main characters have to fight him. The reason why I've been given all of these again is that this first book has had a complete rewrite. I know people have various opinions on whether you should do that or not, but it seems like a lot of my problems with the first book, which I still really enjoyed, are gonna be maybe fixed in this because it is rewritten and it has a little bit more lore and I don't know, better prose or something. So I'm really excited to reread this first book. The others in the series have just had cosmetic changes or something like that, maybe cleaning up typos or I don't even know. This one I'm excited to reread and see how it all unfolds because a lot of really important stuff happens in this first book and I remember the ending being a little confusing. So I'm gonna reread it and I'm gonna let you guys know what I think of this second edition. So I'll probably do an individual review of this after I finish it and then I'll have both of them there so you can check and see how it's improved. The second book in the series is The Emerald Blade, which this is the same cover. I forgot to say that even this cover is different than the first edition of the book. The first edition was a lot lighter of a blue and it had like a dragon looking thing on it. <laughs> this follows like half of the characters of the first book. They end up splitting off in this book. And then the third book, Midnight Dunes, follows the other half of the characters. And I have individual reviews of both of these, but now with the first one being rewritten, they might put these in different lights. I'm not sure. I have never read the fourth book in the series, which is The Frostfire Sage. And then the fifth book is The Forever Night. And I am pumped to continue and see what's going on with Cole and with Iana, I believe is her name. She's a Faken. She can do like healing magic. There's also Rockbled who can control the earth, and as the series progresses, there are more land kits that are introduced, and I love people with powers, so that's one of my favorite things in this series. So these are the first five books, and I think that he said that the core of the series, the first six books, will be completed in the next couple of years, so that's exciting. Next up I have this package from Simon Teen, which is hashtag Shelf Queens. I got this specific box, like not these books, but this theme. Uh, last year, the first year that they did it. I think I read a couple of those books. One of them was Crown of Feathers, which I really enjoyed. It wasn't my favorite, but it had a lot of promise. I think I did a review on that one. This box was also sent before social distancing was happening, so I don't expect to get many books from publishers in the near future. In here, ah, it says Shelf Queen, and then it has a bunch of books. There is a crown that says Shelf Queen on it. <laughs> I'll probably put this in my free little library, so that a girl can wear it and feel like a queen. The first book in there is Girl Unframed by Deb Coletti. This one follows a character named Sydney, and at the beginning of the book, she's flying home to San Francisco to see her mother, who is a very famous celebrity. She's a film star. And basically through this book, 
more and more people start paying attention to Sydney when before she hasn't been paid attention to as much. And I think it's something about her attracting a lot of unwanted attention and then something bad happens and it's about a thrilling night that goes suddenly very wrong when loyalties are called into question. And when Sydney learns a terrible truth, beautiful objects can break. Dun dun dun! I honestly have not checked all the dates, so I'm not sure which books have been pushed back and which dates haven't. This one is coming out eventually, but on here it says June 2020. I'll put up here, because it's white and it'll be easier to do, if the publication has changed since this book has been printed, but so far it says June 2020. We'll see. Next in there is 10 Things I Hate About Pinky. This is probably a companion novel, companion novel to When Dimple Met Rishi, and I think that there's also another one. I can't remember the name of that one either. These are all YA contemporary books. So this one follows a character named Pinky, and Pinky loves making her conservative parents feel uneasy and uncomfortable. She wears her social justice warrior badge with pride. And at the beginning of the book, she's tired of being thrown down or questioned by her parents about her decisions on who she's dating and stuff like that. Her friend Samir doesn't get his internship. And so Pinky asks Samir to pretend to be her boyfriend for the summer so that her parents will get off her back. So it's got the fake dating trope. If you're really into that, this book is coming out also in June, 2020. Again, I'll leave something if it's not true. I haven't read any of the other ones, so I'm not sure if you can jump into this one without knowing the plots or the characters from the other companion novels, but hopefully you can just jump into this one. Let me know. <laughs> I am finding that during these dark times, I don't hate contemporary romance as much as I thought I did. <laughs> so I might actually give this one a shot because gosh, it's just a breath of fresh air when we can't even go outside. <laughs> Next in there was Don't Ask Me Where I'm From by Jennifer DeLeon. This one follows a character named Liliana Cruz. At the beginning of the book, you find out that she's been having a really hard time as of late. Her mother has been quite distant since her father left them again. The neighborhood that she's in is intact for now, but the school that she goes to has become mostly white because of gentrification. Then she also has had to put up walls for herself because now she's at a school that's mostly white and so she thinks that maybe she has to act more white to fit in. So it just follows her as she's going through high school, going through life, and figuring out if these walls are going to serve as a foundation for something, if she can use that to have a stronger voice to make changes, you know, all of that good stuff, or if the walls are gonna come crumbling down around her and her life's gonna be terrible. This one comes out in May of 2020. I'm not sure if it's still true. Again, I'll let you know if it's not. This one is coming out soon, hopefully. Also in there were a couple of buttons that say Shelf Queen on them. I will also be putting these into my free little library so that, you know, people can come and get them and take them. Next is I Killed Zoe Spanos by Kit Frick or Spanos. I know people that pronounce it both ways. This one follows a character named Anna when she goes to Hampton for a babysitting gig or a nanny gig. She finds out that this community has been on edge since the disappearance of a girl named Zoe. As Anna learns more about Zoe and this case, she becomes convinced that Zoe and her are somehow connected. And then when Zoe's body is found, she is charged with manslaughter. A woman named Martina or a girl named Martina has a podcast and she's not convinced that Anna had anything to do with Zoe's death. And so she is covering all of this and is comparing the evidence and what's going on. It says on here that it's inspired by Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, but it also reminds me of Serial, that podcast that was covering, oh gosh, what is that guy's name? I don't know, the murder of this young woman and the boyfriend was convicted of it. I don't know what happened with that, but it kind of reminds me of that kind of setup where Martina is going through all of the evidence, interviewing people in this podcast, and then you come up with your own resolution, maybe? I don't know, that sounds really interesting. <laughs> this one also says that it comes out in June of 2020. And the last book sent in the box by Simon Teen is we Are the Wildcats by Siobhan Vivian. I think I was sent an arc of this book, but I haven't had a chance to pick it up and read it. That's a lie. I've had a chance, I just haven't done it yet. Anyway, this follows a group of girls who are all a part of the field hockey team, and they 
during one night have a, apparently a crazy night. As the girls slip out of their comfort zones, so do their long-held secrets. Suddenly, it's unclear what will happen when this night finally comes to an end or who they'll be to one another tomorrow morning. But what it means to be a wildcat, that they'll know for sure. And it just seems like it's going to be a crazy mess of all of these girls figuring things out and seeing where they stand with all of the other ones or just in life. It seems that the coach also has something to do with what these girls are getting up to. We'll see. <laughs> this one I think is already out. I think that this was Robbie's book club pick. I don't think he's doing that anymore, but I think at one point this was Robbie's book club pick. I'll leave a link down in the description to his channel if you want to check it out. He reads a lot more YA contemporary than I do, but yes, this one came out, I think. <laughs> This one came out at the end of March, so hopefully it still came out. And then I also bought myself a couple of books. The first one I'm actually going to be returning because it came in the wrong edition. Online it said that it was the one that I wanted, and then when it came it wasn't. That is Gregor and the Prophecy of Bane by Suzanne Collins. It came as a like a library edition when it said that it was just the regular hardcover, so I don't know what that's about. But I'm going to return this, get my money back, and then buy it online somewhere else. I bought these books from Barnes & Noble using a gift card, and this was not right. <laughs> this is the second book in the Gregor the Overlander series by Suzanne Collins, which is a middle grade series that follows a character named Gregor. I did an individual review for the first book in the series, and I'll leave that up in the card symbol if you want to check it out. I loved the first book. I ended up giving it like a five, four and a half, five star rating. It follows Gregor, and at the beginning of the first book, he and his little sister fall through a grate in their apartment building, or in a building that's next to the apartment building when they're doing laundry, and they fall into the underland and they have to figure out how to get home and how to fulfill prophecies, basically. The first book's about a prophecy. It seems that this one is about a prophecy as well. Again, I'm gonna return this one and then repurchase it in the edition that I want because so far I'm loving the series, and if I want to keep them, I want them all in the same edition. This one will be leaving my house. Expect the replacement to be in a future haul. I also picked up Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. This is a collection of short stories. So far, I started reading it because it is the book club pick for the book club that my old intern group at Writer's House decided to form so that we can keep in contact with each other. So this, I need to finish it in a few days. It's a collection of short stories and it all follows stories about women and their bodies. And autonomy and stuff like that. The first one was disturbing but well written, so we'll see if I continue to like all the stories. Let me know if you've read this collection and what you thought about it. I also picked up The Mermaid, the Witch, and the Sea by Maggie Takuda Hall. I remember reading the blurb and then I ordered it because I thought it sounded good and now I don't remember. <laughs> so this is a YA fantasy book that follows a character named Flora who is going by Florian on basically it's a pirate ship. And then it also follows a highborn lady named Evelyn. And during the course of the book, it seems like Flora and Evelyn develop some sort of relationship, like a romantic relationship. And then I think it just follows them as they fall in love and are on this ship. I think that there are some other fantastical things going on. Obviously, it says there's a mermaid and a witch and there's a mermaid on the cover. So... I don't know. I thought that the cover looked amazing, which is by Victo Guy? I don't know how to pronounce his last name. N-G-A-I. And I'll let you guys know what I think when I read this one. I've found that I'm really into LGBT fantasy at the moment, so hopefully this is really good. And the last book in this haul, I've already read it, and I'm excited to do a review on it because I freaking loved it. That is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This one follows a character named Linus Baker. He is working at the department in charge of magical youths, and he's basically a caseworker. He goes to these orphanages that are dedicated to magical children and makes sure that the orphanages are up to code and are up to the standards that they need to be at. He's in a super big rut. He follows all the rules to a T. His life is not very exciting. The only thing is that he has a cat that has a very large personality. And then he gets assigned to go on this classified trip to the house in the Cerulean Sea, which is where an orphanage is that has very dangerous magical youths. And then you just follow him as he's going to inspect this orphanage. He meets all these orphans. He meets the caretaker of the orphans. And I 
freaking adored it. It reminded me a little bit of 1984 because he's such in a rut and he follows all the rules and the government is very just like oppressive. It also reminded me a bit of Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and the fact that all of these different children have magical abilities and they're all different species and everything like that. There is a gnome, a forest sprite, a were Pomeranian, a green blob, which they don't really know <laughs> what he is, a wyvern, and an antichrist. And I freaking loved the characters. I'm not going to gush about it too much here, but I highly recommend. I'm going to be doing an individual review for this, so I'll leave it linked down below when that's up. It will be after this video goes up, but I love this book, and I hope you guys will buy it and read it too because it was so good. I also listened to the audiobook. Like, I listened to the audiobook, thought it was so good, and then bought a physical copy so that I could reread it. So check it out. <laughs> so those are all the books that I've recently acquired. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below what books you have acquired recently. Have you been reading more because we're social distancing? I hope you guys are all staying safe. Anything else you want me to know, leave it down below and I will talk to you guys next time.